Hey, folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on the Hagenstead map. Let's get back to reliving the glory days. We've got quite a few jobs now that are going to require us to be driving personally rather than uh, leaving the hired help to go and do it. We've got the rowing up to be done on the grass fields. Helper J has completed their task, so thus the mowing is now done. Uh, so we've got, we'll have the rowing up to do on the fields up there, but uh, the rest of it, well, all of the straw has got to be picked up and all of this ploughing has got to be done. This is both jobs that need to be done manually. So we'll have quite a bit of driving for us to do, just for a bit. And then uh, once that's all done, we'll be able to set the hired help doing a few more jobs. We can trust them to do these things. So we wanna, we're actually going to have quite a big strip of land that we're going to be claiming over on this side because we've gotten rid of those trees and a couple of the pesky rocks that were in the way. We've got quite a slice extra that we can go and use down through here, which is good. I, I like this. Looking at this field, like, I know it's quite long that way. I still think it'd be better if we, when we farm it, we drive up and down in this direction that the tractor is currently going. I think it's just going to be easier for like, unloading the combines and just, just generally working everything as if we keep it all facing in this kind of direction. I mean, I could end up being wrong on that one. It might end up being better to go long ways up and down, but I don't think it will be. It's kind of a wait and see type situation, I think. We do want to plough it all up and get it ready before we bring our combines in, and our, well, our seed drills in. So this this is all going to be planted with barley, along with the rest of it. And then once we've sold our crops, so we've got 32,000 euros at the moment. We've got a lorry load of wheat up there, which we're going to want to cash in on. And then once we've eventually gotten round to cashing in on all of that wheat, then... I mean, plus we've got three more solar panels as well, so we're earning quite a bit of money, and the milk is already starting to increase, so we're getting quite a bit of that. Um, we've got we've got a lot of money coming in now, so things things are going to be growing fairly rapidly with what we're doing, which I, I'm, I'm quite pleased about. That, that is very, very good. Uh, a few more vouchers and more seed drills and stuff, I guess, is what we're going to sort of be aiming towards. We've got our seed, current seed drills have got another season to go. Did say that we would do one more season with them. I mean, we may keep them a little bit longer because it sort of does depend how quickly I think that they get through this next little bit. Doesn't seem to be too bad with them at the moment. And then, you know, they're saving us a little bit of money because it's 220,000 for the new seed drill that we want. The Combine, obviously, is the big thing that I wanted to get, and it seems unlikely that we're going to be able to get that big Combine before we can go and get anything else, now that I've gone and bought this land, but I kind of wanted the land. I know I was talking mostly about getting that Combine, and we were like pretty much set to get the Combine, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't regret this choice. I don't regret it at all. Let's just slow you down a little bit right there and turn you around again. What do we got here? I reckon two more passes. I don't want to squeeze too tight against the track on this one because it's kind of our main route through on this side. And we have a big lorry. We're going to want to be able to get through nice and easy with that lorry. So definitely... One more pass. I'm thinking it'd be... We get two. Maybe if I adjusted it a little bit. We might get two if I adjust it a little bit. Maybe. Maybe possibly. I'm not sure yet. But, I mean, we've got a nice big extension on this field. We, we've already ploughed in a, a very large chunk of extra land for this field, which I'm, I'm, I'm quite liking. I like the fact that we can do this. All of this extra down through here. This was, this was all just a pipe dream when I played FS13 first time round. Being able to have this land over here, this was absolutely nothing but a pipe dream. It's like it's just it was just pure fantasy and nothing else. There, there was no way that you could have done. Actually, well, 
I think there were some people who were talented enough to be able to actually edit the map themselves, but that was way beyond anything that I was able to do. So, for me, it was definitely nothing more than a pipe dream to just be able to go along and remove all the trees and plough up this bit down. I mean, look at this! Ploughing this bit up. And not only that, I'm ploughing in the shrubs. See, look at that! The shrubs are disappearing. I love this. I absolutely <laughs> love it when the shrubs can just be ploughed in. Look at that! Another one! Go on! Another one bites the dust! I did this, I'm, I'm ploughing up land that I only ever dreamed of before. This, this, this could never have been done. I think one more pass we can get away with. I think there's actually just enough width on there for one more pass. I mean, maybe we'll have to slightly alter the track to be able to properly fit down through with trucks after this. But right now, oops. There we go. Okay, I lifted out a little bit too soon there. A little bit premature on that one. Let's bring you back over here. Right. Uh, drop you there. And we'll run down through here. So, yeah, it's just to the edge of the track right there. I think we'll be able to get round that corner without any trouble. So maybe, just maybe, we'll do a couple of slight tweaks on the width of the track there. Just a little bit of alteration. But generally speaking, I think it's going to be fine. And down through here, I don't think I need to do anything to any of this. Need to change any of those bits. Just want to come scuttling on down through here. So we're going to go over to the other side of the field now. And we're going to do the strip in between this field 17 and field 18 over there. And then when we've done that, then we can start doing the top and bottom bits. Just to see where they can all match up. So I'm just going to leave that one exactly as it is. I'm not going to make any alterations on GPS. And we'll ma sort of marry up the top and bottom bits in a little while. So I'm going to sort of bring it to about that point. So generally, you don't want to take it too tight to the road. And I think out about there. So like the road itself... For this field, I won't be ploughing up. I'll join it there. That's going to be the outside edge right there. And I'll go... I'll back up to about this point at the moment. And then we'll run up through here. So that's going to be the first bit that we do. And I'll do one pass back the other way. And then we can start working on that part of it in there. So it's not going to go all the way down to the road. It will go as far as that field there can be extended. And then we can sort of fill in. So we we want to be working on the other direction. Once I've done these two passes, we'll start working on bits going who sort of moving in the other direction. Actually, no, wait. There's another bit that I want to do. I want to figure out the edge of that field down there, don't I? Kind of. Yeah, I do. Right. Uh, this one here wants to go up to uh, about that point right there. I don't want to go any further than that. Yeah, that's that's going to be about where we want it. Bring you back here. And there, I'd say. Off you go. Okay, so that's that little bit done all the way down through. I'm going to do the other field there. I think we'll sort of start doing some of the work in between those. But I, I also want to do the marks across the top. So we've sort of got an outside edge knowing what, uh, what, so that we know where we're working to on a lot of this. Might actually be a better thing to do now. All right, we'll do that. You persuaded me. I've heard you all talking through the screens. We will go and do it that way. We will move the plough over and, and start moving it backwards and forwards over there. Um, very, very curious in FS22 if we're going to be getting the same capabilities. Well, actually what I'm curious about is if we're going to have the capabilities this mod is giving us. This is, I mean, it's something that I've said before. I've actually talked about this before. This is something that I would like to see in FS22. So I am going to go into here. Uh, I'm going to go to there. I'm going to rotate that by 90 degrees like that. And then that one goes to there. That's actually, I think, about where I want the edge of the field to be. Because you don't want to go too close to the road. 
those roads, you don't want to get too close to them. Now, the mod does actually give us the capability of removing the road. I could go and remove that road if I wanted to. Which is actually quite cool, and I have already mentioned that, you know, we could do that as sort of a bit of a grand finale. So the last week or two for the series, we go through, remove trees, remove rocks, remove just about everything. And um, I was even considering removing the town, because we could do that. We could just remove the whole town and then turn it into just one big field. But it kind of seems a bit pointless doing that. So maybe we, we won't take it quite to that extreme, but we could get pretty close to that. So I'm just going to bring that one down to there, like that, and lift you out. What I'm also going to do, though, I'm going to bring you around there. I'm going to lower that one in, and I'm going to go forward just a little bit. I don't want to go any more than that. Actually, that's as far as I want to go. It did just, like connect in a little tiny bit that was missing on there I didn't I don't need it to do any more than that so as we're down here we will do the two quick passes on here that need to be done Go on off your trot go up through that way there we go so two quick passes along here and then we can run down to the other end of the field and we can finish off that bit as uh, the bit next to the road over here now I am at the moment seriously considering removing the wall next to the field down there and sort of building that, like having the field a bit close to the, the road, but I mean, that would actually be like undermining the road completely and I don't really like that idea. Um, I also didn't do that very well, did I? I kept the plough in the ground and then turned around sharp. That would have snapped off all of the tines on there. How many have we got? One, two, three. We've got seven. They're all seven tines would be stuck in the ground over there somewhere. They definitely wouldn't still be with us. If the tractor was even able to do that. I mean, either that or there would have been some other pins or something would have broken off and yeah. Long story short, the tractor itself would probably be alright. Possibly we would have done some major damage to the three-point link doing that. Possibly, but not necessarily. So that that one is, you know, the, the, the debate on that one is still wide open. But we would have done damage to the plough. Now, this one here, she's just going to go along here. You know, I'm just going to drop it right in there. It does just go out a little tiny bit. Mainly because I don't really want to move it. Probably don't need to do this, this pass. Probably I don't. Um, anyway, I am quite looking forward. I haven't really looked at anything uh, being announced with FS22, and there is actually a reason for that. I like it to be more of a surprise. Now, I've, I've sort of caught the gist of it on like looking at pictures for different announcements and that, but I haven't been watching any of the live streams. I haven't watched well I've watched very little of any announcement trailers anything like that there was one trailer the CGI thing that I watched um, and I've seen like different comments in that that have been posted but I've tried to avoid looking at the pictures I seen you know something is definitely we got grapes and we got grape harvesters I know that much I don't know any details about them whatsoever I know nothing about them whatsoever same with the whole factory production thing. I don't know anything about how it's going to work. I don't know what they've said about it. All I know is that they've said that it's going to be happening. And they've sort of, you know, it's another option for income streams and things like that. So the actual details on it, I know very, very little. And I have deliberately tried to avoid, because I quite like going into a game not having seen very much about it. I know that these days that seems like a very, very strange thing to want to do. Most people want to saturate themselves with everything about the game. I'm. This does amaze me. A lot of people will go into a new game that's just been released, having already figured out the step-by-step -step process of getting from the very start of the game to the very finish of the game. To me, that kind of removes a lot of the fun. I actually really like not knowing how to play the game when I go into it and learning about it as I go through. 
making mistakes. I like going into a game and then sort of getting halfway through and thinking, I should, I should have done it differently to that. Occasionally, it gets a bit frustrating. Things do happen in there occasionally. It sort of make you think, ah, oh, I wish I'd done it differently. Um, it kind of like to the point where you're almost considering going back to a very old save and changing things. But it's very, very rare that that actually happens to me. It's nine times out of ten, I don't have that. Nine times out of ten, it's just, yeah, if I do, if I ever do this again, I will choose to do it a little bit differently. But right now, I don't regret my decisions. I made my decisions based on the information I had at hand, not based on information I had about how the game works out later on. And I find it gives me a very different playthrough. Once I know all of the story and I know all the options, then I can, you know, I, I'll tweak my character accordingly. And you don't have those wasted stats and things like that. But that goes into the whole gaming min-maxing idea, where you've got to minimise and maximise all the best points so you get the best possible character. And I've said it before, but... For me, a lot of games, it's all about the narrative of the game, the, the enjoyment of the game. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance was actually looking at some content of Kingdom Come Deliverance just recently with a friend, and I was sort of saying, it's been a while since I played this game. The thing I love about Kingdom Come Deliverance is all the cutscenes. Now, for some people, all of the cutscenes in the game that's the bit they don't like, like, but it's very story driven. The bit that actually drew, drove me away from the game originally, the reason I, I mean, I stopped playing, I played it for quite a while, but then I did eventually stop because I kind of got a little bit disenchanted with the game. And the reason for that had nothing to do with the storyline or anything like that, or the fact that I didn't really know what I was doing. It was entirely down to the combat system. I just don't like the combat system. It's very much a skill-based combat system, and there's nothing wrong with the skill-based uh, skill combat system in itself. It's just that that particular skill-based combat system was is like particularly unforgiving. It's it's a very very difficult one to learn. I mean, once you do learn it, there's a lot of people who've said, you know, once you do learn it, once you pick it up, it's actually pretty good. Um, me personally, I didn't particularly enjoy it i th there's been plenty of combat systems that i did like this one i just couldn't get on with it very well i mean maybe i just need to get good but um at the moment get good is yeah it's it just very very difficult for me so I, for that reason i actually sort of grew a little bit sort of disenchanted with kingdom come deliverance and stopped playing it for a while but generally overall I did really, really like the game. Um, and so much so that I'm actually seriously considering going back into the game now to play it again based on having just seen some content with it. And it sort of made me think, yeah, actually, I was really enjoying the game and the medieval historical accuracy of the game as well is actually something that does appeal to me personally. I, I actually quite like that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, that game was, it was, it, it the, the combat was the bit that kind of held me back. That, that was the bit that I didn't like so much. It was it, a little bit too unforgiving. Not Dark Souls, well, I've never played Dark Souls, so I can't really comment on Dark Souls, but, I mean, it wasn't quite Dark Souls, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, I know I'm not the only one that has expressed that kind of frustration with it, so if I do go back to the game, I will probably find a mod or two that makes the combat system just a little tiny bit easier. Not stupid easy, not by any stretch, and right there, I think that could potentially cause me some problems with combines, that bit that I've just done there. Up a little bit further. I don't want to go too much further than that. I'll leave it there for a minute. Alright, so that's the edge of the field right there. And then I can turn around. Getting this one lined up. It's 
going to be the most difficult, I think. So I was originally going to leave a bit of a road here for to, like, to be able to drive around, but I'm not going to. We're just going to assume that this road is now a dead end and is no longer used. It happens a lot on different farms. It's definitely not something that would be unusual. But there's a dip right there, and I think, you know, there's a big divot right in the middle just there, and I think we're going to have to do something about that. So I'm going to switch over into landscaping mode in just a moment, and we are going to do something about it. I'm also going to just stop there. All right, let's go to landscaping mode. Like that, and we will drop down over here. So we've got this big dip right here. We need to do something about that. That's got to come out of there. So first up, I kind of want to bury into the cliff right there. So I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger right there. And I'm going to flatten that. I'm going to push right into the cliff there. And make a little bit of a mess of this to start with. Just like that. Push that back in. All the way over here. There. Push it back in a bit further. So I'm using up a bit of money to go and do this, but that's not so bad. And I'll push that back in over there. Right. Next, I'll make that bigger still. And I'm going to just smooth down the edges on that a little bit, like that. there so that i've got the edge of that bit now over this side i want to just sharpen that up a little bit more and blend this down so i'm going to bring that down through there now we've still got that kind of divot there but it's not anywhere near as pronounced now. So I'm going to just put that over there. And I'm going to flatten off that piece on the top there as well. Like that. I'm going to move that. And then I'm going to make that bigger still. And zoom out a little bit. Go like that. Oops. Middle mouse button now. I'm being careful I don't get too close to that cliff. Now I want to just blend all of this. So we've got quite a bit of ploughing that we're going to have to do to just straighten this out. But that's absolutely fine. That means now that the combines will be able to get into the corner over here. That's the important thing. Right. Change that over. Uh, you can stop there because I want to sort of work up and down that way. Because I want to figure out how far up there we also want to go. Let's take it back over to this side. And we will join into this one. Like this. Bring you along up here. We'll lower the plow in. He's about lined up now. So we're exactly on the same line that we were on previously. We run that down through there. And now we're slightly higher up in the air on this bit than we were previously. It dips down there. That's absolutely fine. That's not going to affect us in the slightest. I don't want to go any further than that. That's where we want to get to on this. Bring this one back round. And we come up through there. Like that. Uh, that'll do. Alright, I'm quite pleased with that little bit there. So we've got a little bit there just to an extra bit that we've got to tidy up in a second. I'm not going to worry about that for a minute. So I'm going to bring that to that point. So then I'm going to go over here and it's this one here. I want to kind of, how far up and down are we going to work on this? So if I take the edge of this one... Uh, it's where I work to on the road. So what we'll do here is we'll kind of aim at the moment to... Because I can't go any further than there. So I reckon if we go to the edge of the road there, that'll go up quite a way. It's a little bit of an angle. If I bring the edge of the road over here, it might be one more pass that we get out of it. Which isn't going to be a huge amount. A little bit of room. We don't want to go too tight to the cliff anyway. i got to remember not to go too tight to the cliff. We can't be too greedy with this. So let me just do that and start just plowing in this line here. 
and then we'll turn around so we'll assume maybe that the road bit isn't going to be part of this field so bring you up to there and run right up to this point spin round there we go and go that way so is anybody else like me in that you don't like knowing very much about the game beforehand? I know that there are quite a few people that don't even watch the, um, like, YouTubers such as myself. We will usually get the game a little bit earlier than anyone else. And then we can go make videos, which just is designed, obviously, as a marketing thing. It is designed purely to add to the hype train. And so you see the game being played just before it's released and you think, oh, that looks really cool. I want it. I will get in on the release of that one, see if I can also be a part of this. Um, so, yeah, it's absolutely designed for the hype train. It's the whole, this, this, the, the whole idea of the marketing for it. We know that. We accept that. That's just how it is. I know that some of you don't watch those videos there are some of you that absolutely refuse to watch any videos um of the early release content and i've got no problem with that i mean i've i've had like i've seen arguments about it before online and it doesn't really seem like it's worth arguing about to be honest either you watch them or you don't it's that the, that's that's all there is to it so, but i am curious who does watch them Anyone here actually watch those videos, or um, are you very much a, I'm going to wait until I've got the game in my hands before I start watching it, because I don't want to spoil it. Me personally, if there is a game that I am waiting to buy, and a YouTuber gets a copy of the game early and is able to start, I don't generally watch a lot of le Let's Plays anyway. I never used to watch any, but I have in the last 12 months started to watch a few here and there I, I still don't generally watch let's plays they're, they're not really the type of video that i will sit and enjoy um because i prefer to play the games myself this is the main thing um I, i'm not really one for sitting and watching it when i can be doing it myself um but there are a few let's plays that i have started to enjoy and i have watched uh minecraft ones in particular um Mumbo Jumbo and Il Mango are two of my favourites, but I have started, you know, there's a couple of other bits that I've watched as well, and I haven't found them unenjoyable, put it that way. It's still not necessarily something I would choose over a lot of other content, but, um, you know, they're not entirely, it's not entirely out of the range of possibility that I will watch Let's Plays anymore. So, anyway... I know this seems a little bit strange that I'm a YouTuber, I, I, I make my living out of making Let's Plays for people to watch, and I never watch any myself. It's, yes, the irony is not lost on me. Um, I'm very, very well aware of that. Um, but I'm curious, like, because me personally, if I'm waiting to buy a game and a YouTuber gets it like a month early and is able to go and play it and start demonstrating some of the content that is there, there is absolutely no way that I will be watching that content. There is absolutely no way. I just could not do it. I want to fight. I want to experience that for myself. I don't want to go in there with spoilers having been put in place already. I know I'm. I did say originally I wasn't going to do this a lot, but um, the rules in this particular series are not meant to be adhered to by any particularly. Um, Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.